Hello again, friends. This is Brandon Hart, and the show is from the workshop. We, this time, are going to be focusing on the mysterious AT command. Uh, some of you uh, that have been around the industry for a while, working with analog modems or all that kind of stuff, may remember the old faithful AT command. And uh, it's the same thing. It is exactly what you're remembering. You might be thinking, no, can't be the same. It is. It is the same thing, yes. So, um, we are gonna talk about what AT commands do, how they work, um, and then actually do uh, jump in and, and send some AT commands to a modem to see what a, the response looks like and all that. So, without further ado, let's jump in. AT commands are what you use to talk to your Skywire modem. Um, so, it is literally in case in case AT sounds like I'm, I'm saying a different word, it is literally just the two letters AT. In fact, that is your very first AT command that you would send into your Skywire modem. Just to check that, uh, check that everything's working. And I kind of think of this as attention. You know, like, uh, I'm, I'm about to talk to you, I'm about to send you something, attention, and then that's followed by whatever it is you might want to tell it. So in this case, I just want it to tell it, you know, hey, attention, and it will respond back and say, okay, I'm paying attention, basically. I don't know if that's really how that's supposed to work, but that's the way I always like to think of it. So, um, that is the AT command. There is a standard set of commands, which you will find works across all the different Skywire modems, as well as other modems and modules and things like that out there. That is the Haze AT command set. And, and um, it is a, a, an old, oldie but a goodie. Um, lots of different AT commands fall within the standard Haze AT command set. So no matter which Skywire mode or which module you happen to be using, you can send it those commands. You can get generally the same type of response back. And so those are really easy ones to always kind of work with. However, in addition to the Haze AT commands, you will also find that there are proprietary AT commands that have been added. So they could be added in this case by Telet or by Sierra Wireless or Jamalto or, or whatever the module manufacturer that is using the chipset uh, for getting the basic functionality may have added for extra functionality. So controlling IO, controlling uh, on off or low power modes or um, if you have a GPS radio, being able to address that, those are going to be proprietary AT commands. All right, so that's a basic overview of AT commands, sort of what they are and, and uh, the different types of AT commands that you might encounter. So let's go ahead and connect up our Skywire modem. We are using the Skywire development kit. We're connected into the USB port that has the FTDI chip in there so that we can talk over serial to our Skywire modem. Got the power supply that came with the Skywire development kit. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And plug in USB to your computer. Now, um, some computers may require that you install a driver for the FTDI chip in order to be able to make this communication work. All that's covered in the manual. So you can check it out there. Then you're going to go into your uh, terminal program, TerraTerm, I'm using pool term here. Uh, open it up, go into your settings, and basically what you want to be looking for in whatever window you happen to have is a few different things. You need to set it up so that your baud rate is 115.200. Your data is set to 8-bit parity is set to none, stop is one or one bit, and flow control is none. That's pretty much gonna be the, the settings, in fact, those will be the settings that work for all of the different Skywire modems. So if you set it up that way, you really only need to set it up that way once, save your settings, save your configuration, and you can use it going forward. Um, all right, so now you are ready to go. Press the on button on your Skywire development kit and that will fire up the Skywire modem. Um, 
not a whole lot's going to happen. You may see a quick blink on the LED that's on the Skywire modem itself, but you're not really going to see a whole lot of activity in your terminal program. But what you can do to make sure that everything is running, give it a little bit of time to fire up, and then you send in that very first AT command, AT, and then hit enter. What you should see is a response back of OK. In some cases, you may have to turn on echo. For instance, on our Cat1 Skywire modem, the NL-SW-LTE-GELS3, you actually need to go in and turn on echo in order to be able to see it respond back and, and show you that you are typing, in fact, AT. And uh, otherwise, you, you just sort of don't know that it's responding with anything at all. You can type ATE1 to make that work. OK. Then you're going to hit the enter key again. You should get that response back. OK. Now you know that you're talking to your Skywire modem. Congratulations. That is the first step in, in making development happen. You were able to send it a command. It responded back. Now you know that you are good to go. So now if we go back to our terminal program, we can actually do some things which might be a little bit more useful than simply having it respond back OK. The first thing we're going to do is just to make sure that you're in a good signal area for the modem that you happen to be using, let's go ahead and check the signal strength. So this is one of the Hayes AT commands and is pretty general for all of our Skywire modems. In this case, you can just type, as you see I'm doing here, AT plus CSQ. And if you press the enter key, you're going to get a response back, generally in the form plus CSQ, colon, and then some numbers. <clears throat> so the first two sets of numbers are the signal strength of the antenna. So that's how much signal you're actually getting. There's, there's a chart that you can use to kind of match that up with what level of signal that is. Uh, generally, it's between 0 and, and 31 and there's a scale there for that. If you're getting a 99, that means that it's not known or not detectable. Um, that could mean you have a problem with, with your setup there. Um, so make sure that, uh, that you're not getting a 99. Uh, you know, if you are, are, are you sitting inside of a Faraday cage or um, are you in a, a situation where your antenna got disconnected? Check the UFL connection uh, for the cable on your Skywire modem and so on. The second set of, of numbers that you're going to get back after the comma is the bit error rate in percent. So you can kind of think of this as um, you know how accurate the uh, signal strength value, the RSSI value you got really is. Um, most of the time you can kind of ignore that for the most part or at least I do, and just look at the RSSI value itself. But just bear in mind that RSSI is not everything. It doesn't tell you everything you might need to know. It doesn't tell you whether it's a usable signal. It just says that there is, in fact, signal. Another one you might see is for make maybe a CDMA modem. Uh, you might send in this one right here, AT plus CREG question mark, um, and you'll get a response back, plus CREG colon, and then two different values, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, things like that. Um, so this just kind of gives you an idea for CDMA modems, whether you are registered with the network and whether you're roaming, whether you're on your home network, um, or if you're not getting one of the, the two values, which is basically either 0, 5 or 0, 1, that means something is probably wrong. Either your device is not active or um, you know, it's, it's not f fired up properly or it's not programmed properly or something like that. So that's for CDMA modems. Um, on a similar one for LTE and GSM modems would be AT plus CGREG question mark. Um, and that'll give you a similar response. Again, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, that kind of stuff. Look for 0, 1 or 0, 5. So those are the uh, good ones to check. One thing I haven't mentioned is uh, a lot of these commands, you can either send the command itself, so AT plus CGREG, -E bare, uh, just bare like it is, 
Uh, some of them will have some parameters that you'll need to include with the command. Sometimes if you just type in the command and then question mark, it'll give you the current status. Um, if you type in the command and then equals question mark, sometimes you will get back um, the list of possible things that you can send in with that. So those are kind of some cool little tips that can help a lot, a lot of times figure out how to proceed, how, how, what, what, what kind of information there is, even if you don't know the exact parameters to include. So as you're playing around with the Skywire modem in the dev kit, this could be a, a nice little tip. If you're not sure how to format something, if you're not sure what it means, put a question mark in there or put an equals question mark in there and you might get some valuable information back. So hopefully that's helpful as well. Um, so those are, uh, that, there's a couple of, uh, you know, real quick um, AT commands that you can send and just sort of see what's going on. Uh, some of the other ones that we might do for like the GSM modems is uh, AT plus CGD CONT. Um, and that gives you the ability to check what the APN is, how it's configured, things like that. Um, you have the SGACT, uh, which is the uh, activation of the P2P context, things along those lines. But we're not going to really dive into all of the different AT commands that exist. This was really just sort of about what an AT command is, how you might use it, how, you know, what they look like, and, and so on. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to get up and running. Um, again, talking to your Skywire modem, getting it to actually answer back to you for the very first time could be really fun and exciting. I know the first time that happened to me, I thought I was amazing because I did the thing that I was supposed to do and it did what it was supposed to do and everything was great. Um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, go ahead and uh, do us a favor, subscribe, and we will see you in the very next From the Workshop. Thank you very much and have fun designing.